In this part of the lesson, we're going to try to explain why some instructions in VBA require you to use parentheses or round brackets, and some instructions don't. This is one of those really common sources of confusion when you're first getting started in VBA. So let's see if we can clear things up. Let's start by opening up the file that I've downloaded and extracted. There is no code stored in here, but there's a couple of objects that we've created on the on the only worksheet in the workbook. Let's head into the developer tab and then open the Visual Basic Editor. And we'll start by inserting a new module, and then we'll create a new subroutine called using parentheses. So I can create a sub called using parentheses. If I can spell it properly, there we go, finally. So as we saw in the previous part of the lesson, when you type in a space after the name of a method, so for example, if we refer to the this workbook printout method, if I type in a space, you see a big tooltip appears showing you all the parameters of the method. You may also have noticed that the parameter list is enclosed in a set of round brackets or parentheses. That kind of suggests that you should write the round brackets in yourself, but that's not always the case. For instance, if I pass in an argument to the from and the to and the copies parameter, without the parentheses, everything is absolutely fine. But if I attempt to add in a set of parentheses as suggested by the tooltip, when I move the cursor to another line, I'll receive a syntax error. In VBA, you only use a set of parentheses around an argument list when you want to return something from the method or the property that you're using. So the printout method here, we're not trying to return a result from that method, we simply want it to perform its job. There are several other examples of statements you can write like this. So for example, let's say if I wanted to add a worksheet, that's something we've done previously in other, uh, other lessons in this module. So if I say worksheets.add and follow that with a space, I see a tooltip appears that shows me a list of parameters. So I could say, for example, if I wanted to insert the new worksheet before the active sheet, I'll pass the active sheet object to the before parameter, type in a couple of commas, and I'm gonna say that I want to insert two worksheets. Without parameters, sorry, without parentheses, that one works perfectly happily. But if I do wrap a set of parentheses around the argument list, again, I'm gonna receive a syntax error. Similarly, if I try to place a border around a cell, I can say active cell dot border around, and this method has several parameters. If I type in a space, I can see them all. Let's say that I wanted to apply a, a, an Excel dash style to the line style and an Excel thin option to the weight and then finally, I want to skip over to the color parameter and specify that that should be RGB red. Once again, without the parentheses, this is perfectly happy. But with the parentheses, things will go horribly wrong once more. One more example. Let's say we wanted to apply the protect method to the active sheet. So I refer to the active sheet and then the protect method. If I type in a space after this one, annoyingly, the IntelliSense doesn't work properly with the active sheet. But again, I could state that I wanted to set the password to be equal to, well, let's see, think of something super secret. There we go, secret. And then I could specify that I did want to protect the contents of the worksheet. So I can say contents colon equals true. You'll learn about how to find out how these methods work, by the way, in later parts of the course. I'm just picking a few examples at the moment to demonstrate that without parentheses, things work. With parentheses, things don't. So you only need to use parentheses when you want to return something from the method or the property that you're using. Now let's look at a few examples of instructions where you do need to use parentheses. A common reason for using parentheses is when you want to apply a method or a property to the result of a method or a property to which you have passed an argument. So for example, to put that into plain English, let's say I wanted to use the cells object and apply the find method to it to try to find the word wise owl in the list of cells on this worksheet. If I type in a space after this after the find method, I can see the first parameter that appears is the what parameter. So here I can look for the word wise owl. Now at this point, if I press enter, this will work perfectly happily without parentheses. But what I would now like to do is apply the select method to the range object that the find method returns. And sadly, I can't simply do that, hopefully for obvious reasons. If I try to simply say dot select at the end of that statement, of course, that throws a syntax error. What I can do to make this work is wrap the argument list in a set of parentheses so that I can apply the select method to the result of the find method applied to the cells object. There are many other examples of this type of statement where you want to apply a method or a property to the result of a previous method or property. 
So let's say, for example, that I wanted to refer to the offset property of a range object. I'm going to refer to the active cell object, and then I'm going to look for the offset property. If I then type in a space, I can see that I can pass in two arguments to the row offset parameter and the column offset parameter. If I enter a one followed by a comma and then a zero, that's referring to the range object that's one row below the active cell. What I'd then like to do is select the cell that I've referenced. And again, if I type in a full stop followed by the word select, that clearly isn't going to work. If I wrap the argument list in a set of parentheses, this time I can apply the select method to the result of the offset property, and that will work. As another example, let's try to change the colour of the circle shape sitting on sheet 1. To do that, I can refer first of all to the active sheet, and then I can refer to the shapes collection of that sheet. What I then need to do is pass in the name of the shape whose colour I want to change. And if I attempt to do that without using parentheses, I can type in the name of the shape, oval1. And then I need to refer to the fill property of that shape. So I can type in dot fill, then I can refer to the for colour property. And then I can attempt to make that equal to a, a different colour. Let's go for RGB green. If I hit, attempt to hit enter at this point to move to the next line, of course, that line throws a syntax error. But if I were to wrap the name of the shape in a set of parentheses, then the fill property can be applied to the result of the shapes property and everything works perfectly. You won't always necessarily see a syntax error to indicate the problem that you're, you're generating by not using parentheses. To demonstrate that briefly, let's try to add a new chart into the workbook. In a similar way to adding a worksheet, I can apply the add method to the charts collection. So if I say charts.add, I can then type in a, a space to see the tooltip appear to show me the parameter list. And if I want to insert this new chart before the active sheet, I can say before colon equals active sheet. What I'd then like to do is modify the chart type of the chart that I'm creating. So to do that, I can type in a full stop and then say chart type equals, and then I'm going to go for a pie chart. So I'm going to use Excel pie as the uh, as the option there. Now, if I move the cursor or press enter on this line, I don't see the line highlighted in red. There's no syntax error here, but I'm not doing what I'm trying, what I really want to do here. If I try to run this instruction, it won't do what I want. What I'm doing here, I, I want to apply the chart type property to the chart that I've added. But the way I've written this instruction, I'm applying the chart type property to the active sheet, um, which is definitely not what I want to do. So in this case, what I really need to do is wrap up the arguments that I'm passing to the before parameter in a set of parentheses, and then I can apply the chart type property to the result of the add method. Another reason you need to use parentheses around an argument list is when you want to use the result of the method or property you're calling to assign a value to something else. So to put that into plain English again, let's say that we wanted to change the interior color of the active cell. So if I say active cell dot interior dot color equals. What I'd like to do now is rather than using a named color as I have here with RGB green or RGB red, I'd like to define my own color by using a function called RGB. So if we look for the RGB keyword in the list, you'll see this appears as a method in the IntelliSense. If I open a set of round brackets, I can see that there's a tooltip appears with three compulsory parameters, red and green and blue. So I can pass numbers to each of these things. I'm going to go for 200 red, followed by a comma, zero green, another comma, and 200 blue. If I then close around brackets, or the parentheses, and hit enter, I'll generate a result from the RGB method, which will then be passed into or used to set the value of the color property. If I attempted to do this without using the parentheses around the argument list for RGB, this will, once again, return a syntax error. So in this case, I can't use the RGB function without putting a set of round brackets around the argument list. As a little hint to help you with this, you can often spot whether a method or a property returns something by using the tooltip that appears. So if I just go back to the RGB example we've just created, if I take away the arguments that I passed into it and then just type in another round bracket after the RGB method, I can see that at the end of the tooltip, it tells me after the close parenthesis that it returns a result as long. Long is the name of a data type in VBA, something you'll learn much more about in a later module in this course.
So because I know that the RGB method returns something, it tells me what type of thing it returns, I know that in this context, I need to use the round brackets to, um, to, to enclose the argument list. Another good clue when you're doing things like this is if I type in the RGB method again and type in a space immediately after its name, in this particular context, because I'm using the RGB method immediately after an equals operator, typing in a space doesn't display the tooltip at all. If I open the parentheses, on the other hand, the tooltip appears indicating that I'm using them correctly. So I can now fill in the argument list again and close the parentheses and that now will work. There are many other examples of tool tips that show you what type of thing a method or a property returns. If we head back to the find method that we've applied to the cells object, let's take away the select method and the argument that we passed into the find method and then open up a set of parentheses immediately after it. Again, you can hopefully see that at the end of the tooltip, after the close parenthesis, it tells me that the find method returns something as a range. If I want to make use of the object returned or the reference returned to the range object, what I need to do is wrap up the argument list in a set of parentheses. So as we've just seen, I can say wise owl in double quotes and round brackets, and then I can apply the select method to the result of the find method. The tooltip will also indicate when the method or property doesn't return anything. So if I take away the argument list for the border around method, for example, if I type in a space immediately after its name, I can see that at the end of the tooltip, after the close parenthesis, there's nothing. So this indicates that this particular method doesn't return a value or a reference to an object. Because of that, I'll never need to use the parentheses around the argument list. The border around method doesn't return anything, so I can never make use of it, which means I will always use the border around method with no parentheses around the argument list. Now, despite all that explanation, this is still one of the easiest things to get wrong and cause confusion when you're first getting started in VBA. Uh, my advice personally is not to worry about it too much. You'll always see an indication of when you've done the wrong thing because you'll receive a syntax error when you do use parentheses and you're not supposed to, such as here, or when you do the reverse and you don't use the parentheses when you are supposed to. So for now, just accept that you're likely to get this wrong. Um, and we'll fix these sorts of problems as we go along and progress further through the course.